So hello everybody listening at home. My name is Antonio Lopez and I am with Soundbridge Music. We are a nonprofit founded in 2017 as a grassroots effort to use the power of music to make a positive difference in communities across the Front Range. Today we have with us Jackson Emmer. He is Soundbridge Music's featured artist for the month of July. In the words of Rolling Stone, few are writing songs like Jackson Emmer. He can't help it. Songs keep him up at night. Born with an unrelenting creative spark, Emmer has quietly built his reputation as a songwriter songwriter on the outskirts of country music. His work blends humor with heartache and tradition with exploration. I first heard Jackson perform a few years back at Boulder in the Round. I was immediately pulled in by his warmth, sincerity, and professionalism, not to mention his stellar songwriting. I bought one of his trucker hats at the merch table after the show and have been following him and his music since. Hello, Jackson. Thank you for joining us. How are you hey, doing? Antonio. Hey, I'm doing great. Thank you for having me on your show. And how are you doing? I'm doing great, man. Just uh, looking out my window here, watching the garden grow. Beautiful Colorado evening and feeling all right, man. So it's a, it's a good year for gardens, I think, because people uh, are home. <laughs> yeah, everyone comment with your garden pictures. See how those zucchinis and tomatoes are doing. <laughs> so uh, I understand today's a big day for you, Jackson. You uh, just released some new music today. Is that right? That's true. Yeah, I just released a Rolling Stones cover um, of their song Dead Flowers, which um, I have loved for a long time. That's a great song, but um, I haven't played it that much until recently and it was stuck in my head and I decided to kind of create a new version of it because it's like already a perfect rock song. I didn't need to try to do a better rock version of it. So it turned into a weird electronica like folk country song that uh, is different and unique and was a pleasure to make. Nice, man. Yeah, that was uh, the first thing I listened to upon waking this morning. Cool. And uh, there was some nice sonic twists in that, man. You did a really good job on the production. And I really like how the song like blooms throughout, but you never go to like that boom, 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 electronic zone. Which yeah, I think, which I think is cool, man. You like kept it like true to you, but exploring new sonic territory as well. Thank you. Yeah, I um, I know it's just really easy to when you're playing with electronic drums, just get something to be like boom, 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 and just like hold it there forever. And I really think that's a great thing about electronic music is like it gives you what you want so much of the time. But um, I thought it would be interesting, especially because so many people know this song, to sort of make it about like depriving you of what you expect and handing you something, some other kind of sonic gift, um, which is why the harmonies are like strangely placed and they go from like really small or minimal harmonies to like very dense, lush ones in unexpected places. They're also like arpeggiated synthesizers which also have like kind of tweaked oscillators on them so like things are always moving and happening but it's not at all in the format that you would hear in like a pop or rock song um, but the song itself is basically the same arrangement as it's been recorded in a lot of times so um, it's a it's a weird blend but again just really fun to make and thanks for listening yeah, man. So when I ask you this next question here, maybe I'll look up that link for anyone interested in maybe checking it out, saving it for later. I'll post that in the comments. But uh, another, uh, something else I want to comment on is just I really admire you, how you're like finding new ways to pivot your music business and all the challenges that, that we're facing as musicians. And uh, you're doing these Zoom offerings of workshops, right? Can you talk a little bit more about those? Sure, yeah. I have been teaching songwriting workshops in person for a couple of years. Um, and that's been really cool. So when I'm on tour, normally for those of you who are, who are just getting to know me, I tour around the United States playing like 75 to 100 shows each year. And sometimes it's just me and sometimes I have a band or sometimes I have just one other musician 
a friend backing me up. And that's really fun. And one of the ways that I sort of add to my tours is by teaching workshops along the way. So I've been teaching songwriting workshops around the country, like I said, a couple years. And it was going so well, we decided to host a retreat, a songwriters retreat in Glenwood Springs. And that was going to be in May. And I was bringing out a songwriter friend of mine, Mary Bragg from Nashville. Okay. And it was going to be a multi-day event. And once coronavirus hit, it became really clear that that wasn't going to happen. So we moved the retreat online. And then, I, you know, as people kind of were in their frazzle of trying to figure out what to do with themselves, people didn't want to commit to doing a you know, three-day online retreat, but seemed interested in just kind of popping in for some workshops here and there. And I thought, okay, well, let's, let's break this apart and reinvent it as a Zoom series or as multiple Zoom workshops. So um, we've got a few planned for the rest of the month. The subjects are how to book a tour, <laughs> um, social media, EPK and website building and use for musicians, which is just really crucial to how musicians navigate this new digital world, um, both pre and post pandemic. And then uh, one that's more for guitarists, 10 things every guitar player should know, which is more stuff about just um, ear training, understanding how to tune and take care of your instrument, how to get it working properly with a sound system when you're on tour or playing in venues. Um, and just these kinds of bullet point things that I feel like a lot of guitar players are missing. Um, but if they learn them, it'd be a lot easier to communicate with both band members and people who run their venues or their sound systems or whatever. So um, I'm trying to offer an array of things uh, in which I guess an array of workshops on subjects in which I feel I can help people the most. And a couple of them are happening twice, like how to book a tour is happening twice. Um, first one's tomorrow, but it's sold out. Next oh. one is this weekend. Um, and all that is listed on my website. So jacksonemmer.com. We can throw a link in the comments. Um, but yeah, there's a workshop tab on my website and that has a list of everything and info and then ticketing. So oh. yeah, yeah, I'm going to throw that link in the comments right now. Thanks for, for doing everyone that. interested in checking out the workshop offerings that Jackson's doing. I just put a link there to his website and, uh, also, man, it seems like, from my point of view, you really have it down with like all the different hats that a musician has to wear. And uh, is there any like resources that you found particularly helpful in developing that skill set? No, there's no like one single resource that has helped me, except um, there's a guy named Chris Kresge who I think teaches at the University of Denver. Do you know him? I do know him. Yeah, he does the Colorado Sound. Yeah, he's got yep. the Colorado Sound. Um, so he, a while ago, he and I had a phone conversation and we were talking about what it sort of takes to make a living in the music business. Sometimes business is in quotation marks. <laughs> um, and anyway, I should say that he he mentioned just like, the advice he was giving all of his students was that they need to diversify their income if they want to have a life in music or the arts. Um, so you can't just rely on touring. You can't just rely on royalties. You can't just rely on recording or merch. Um, you have to have sort of a fanned approach to all those things and, um, and whatever else you come up with. And my, my income has been really, heavily linked to touring for the past few years, like just totally leaning into that. I do teach one-on-one -on -one music lessons and that's been nice too. So when I'm home from tour, I do that. Um, but as the pandemic hit and I just watched like all of that income evaporate, mm -hmm. um, I, you know, like a lot of musicians, I was like, okay, well, I guess I put too many eggs in one basket. Um, so where else can I put them basically? Um, and at the same time, I took a, um, a class online at Berkeley College of Music 
And I talked to a couple of professors there just about, I mean, a lot of things, but I asked them what advice they were giving their students who are graduating this year that they weren't focusing on as much in other years. It's like, okay, coronavirus has hit. What are you telling graduates? And they said the same thing that Chris Kresge had said, which was, you're graduating into this crazy world uh, more so than ever. If you want to have a career as an artist or as a musician, you have to diversify. And um, so hearing it three times for me was the thing that it took to really take that seriously. Um, and I'll be honest, you know, I've like seen other musicians, like let's say it's John Prine. He's a, he's a great example. I'm mm -hmm. like, John Prine's not teaching music lessons on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or whatever. Like, he's just a rock star, or whoever, you know, yeah. name your example. Um, and so part of me thinks, okay, if you just double down on being a rock star, then you'll be a big enough rock star. You don't have to do this other stuff. But it's really, that's not the way it works. And it's certainly not where I'm at. And also, to flesh out that example, John Prine has a publishing company. He also has a record label. He's signing other artists to that too. Mm -hmm. So he's diversifying. Uh, we just don't like get to see that as directly because they're companies and not just the individual artists like me. So yeah. you go to my website, you see all the, the, the different branches and we can talk about it. Um, and I do think that that's what it takes. And it just took me hearing it three times to be like, okay, how are we going to make this happen? But yeah, yeah, no, no roadmap besides that. Yeah. So you would say with the pandemic happening, you're leaning into the workshops really hard right now into like, you're doing like zoom one-on-one -on -one lessons as well. Uh, yeah. So I teach workshops. Okay. I um, teach, Zoom individual lessons. I teach in-person lessons with masks on on my front porch. Um, I was hired to work in a music studio in Carbondale, which we talked about. Yeah. Um, I receive royalties for my music that gets played places. People buy my merch off my website. Um, and no performance fees really right now, except for people who tip. Um, you know, if you do a live stream, people tip you, uh, which is nice. And then also there is Patreon. So I'm sure some of your viewers know what that is, but have you guys talked about that on this? No, I think it would be stuff? great to, to ex explain Patreon for people that, that are maybe unfamiliar with the concept. Great. So Patreon is a voluntary subscription service. Um, it is designed to support people who create stuff primarily like art or digital content. And the idea behind it is like the royalty systems that would support those content creators are basically broken. Um, you know, if I get a million streams on Spotify, I might make $150. That's insane. Um, and we should fix that, but that's kind of a long process to fix. So Patreon is kind of this website that has sprung up in the middle of that, similar to Kickstarter, where artists need funding for a certain project. You know, you raise a bunch on Kickstarter, they get to go do their project. Patreon is more like you raise small amounts of money, uh, but sustainably month to month. So people who like my music can pitch in like the amount of a cup of coffee, you know, three bucks, I think is the minimum. And that just, get sent to me monthly and every week or two or three or four, whatever it is, I release new music and content. And um, it's nice because it's some steady income for me and for other artists. And uh, the patrons get an inside glimpse of how all that art is made, what it takes to do it and share it. And it feels really good to support something that you care about and, uh, consume or appreciate regularly yeah was that a fair summary of patreon that was great man that was like, probably <laughs> the best i've ever heard they, they should hire you to like pitch oh, them, man jack conti jack conti's doing fine that guy's amazing <laughs> have you have you seen his band scary pockets oh uh, yeah dude i love scary pockets they do all those really cool like reimagining of 
classic songs and just put them in new formats and yeah so yeah. that the keyboard player i don't know if you know that is the founder of patreon well i i, I don't know if i knew that man i don't think yeah I knew that. he's a wild guy speaking Very of wild guys inspiring <laughs> How about you share a song for everyone tuning in right now, Jackson? Sure, yeah. I'll play you guys, uh, I'll play you a couple new songs as we Yeah, let's hear one song now or two songs now? Let's, let's do two let's songs, do man. Okay. Two we'll songs two. sounds great. All right. <laughs> for everyone just joining us, my name is Antonio Lopez. I'm with Soundbridge Music. We're here with our July featured artist mm -hmm. of the month. Jackson Ammer, who's going to be sharing some songs with us. Uh, what you got for us first, Jackson? The song is called uh, Terlingua. It is about Terlingua, Texas. Sorry for the screen wobble here. Let's see, we'll fix that. Um, Terlingua is a border town. Have you been down there? I've never been, but I've heard, heard of Terlingua. Cool. Yeah, if you get the chance, you should go play at the Starlight Theater. They oh, have yeah. um, a lot of live music, and it's a cool hang in the middle of the desert. Um, I went down there right before the pandemic and was just really, like, moved by that place and loved it. Um, and I met an old songwriter there named Butch Hancock, who's just, like, American and Texas songwriting legend. It was really cool. Um, so I was down there for a couple of days and got a song out of it. With Mexican murals, stucco and sawto, grave sites just marked by a map. Miles of sunset, acres of cactus, and echoes of decades of sand. Terlingua, Terlingua, where have you been? Where have you been all my life? Terlingua, Terlingua, you dust devil rascal, misfit fiasco. I want thing to ask though, where have you been all my life? There's posters and refuse. Vinyl and hubcaps, an old dog just lays on the ground. Where no one's a stranger, the rain is your savior, and a dead goat's the mayor of town. Terlingua, Terlingua, where have you been? Where have you been all my life? Terlingua, Terlingua, the dust devil rascal, misfit fiasco of one thing to ask, though, where have you been all my life? Guitar solo. call it a ghost town and it pretty much is except for the souls in this room borrowed the wild from coyotes and cougars it looks like they'll take it back soon turn lingua turn lingua where have you been where have you been all my life? Turn lingua, turn lingua, you dust devil rascal, misfit fiasco. I've one thing to ask though, where have you been all my life? No place ever felt quite so right. There's a song for you. Nice, man. That was really great. I really like how uh, 
your songs like are fresh and new while working in like a classic idiom and like they're they're like instantly classic man like <laughs> it's it's, it's it, you make something that's really hard to do sound easy and simple thank you very much that is um the highest compliment i could receive i appreciate that you're a magician man <laughs> <laughs> well um i'll play another song this one is not quite done and i normally wouldn't play it on the internet but i figured why not um there's a couple of lines in here i think we'll fix before it it gets recorded but why not broadcast it um I wrote this with my friend Terry Klein in Austin, Texas. Uh, he's a great songwriter too. So if you're able to throw his music link in the comments or something, that'd be cool. Terry um, Klein? Terry Klein, yeah, K-L-E-I-N. Um, just a wonderful person and songwriter. Um, we like to write songs together when I'm in Texas, but since I haven't been able to get down there, because of the pandemic, we're doing it on the internet. Oh. Chasing paychecks, shoveling dirt, working all day to have my feelings hurt. I get home, you chew me out. Baby throws a fit like a mushroom cloud. I don't need a crystal ball to tell you I'll be sleeping on the couch. She don't need a rolling pin, only has to open up her mouth. Four cheap flowers in a mason jar, only two taken from the neighbor's yard. I get home, kiss and make up, love so loud that the dead wake up. Opposites attract for a reason, but I'll never know why. I need you like a prairie dog needs another eagle in the sky. Say la vie, say l'amour. You're the tide, I'm the shore. Bolt of lightning, charcoal tree. Call us a mess or a masterpiece. Two step Tuesday, double crown. One dance move just spinning round, twirl all night with older men. I don't mind, but you wish I did. Half the time I'm doing wrong, the other half I'm doing wrong again. Yeah, chicken wire, chili lights, call yourself a lover, not a friend. Say la vie, say la mort. You're the tides, I'm the shore. Bolt of lightning, blackened tree, call us a mess or a masterpiece. A bolt of lightning, charcoal tree. Call us a mess or a masterpiece. Hey, man, I, I don't know if I would change too much about that. I thought that was pretty good. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> it's this close. Dude, this. there's like a lot of lines in there that like hit you, you know, like, you know, when you got a good line. Thank and you. There's a lot of those in there, man. Thank you. Yeah, so thank you. you. You were saying you wrote that with your friend, Terry Klein. Mm -hmm. And where does he live in Texas? He lives in Austin. He's in Austin? Nice. And how many songs have you and Terry written together? Maybe like four or five, something like that. Not a ton, but. Yeah, it's fair amount, man. That's pretty good. I mean, obviously, 
you like the first one enough to write the second one and so on and so on. That's right. And I <laughs> find that with some people, it just comes really naturally. And with other people, it's like pushing a boulder uphill uh, that, you know, never ends. Um, yeah. So, yeah, right now, I mean, I'm, I'm always happy to collaborate with people, but I, I do find that I keep going back to write with the people who it um, just comes most easily with. Yeah. So uh, let's pop back into a few questions here. Uh, I really sure. enjoyed those songs, man. I'd like to get back to the songs here shortly as well. But uh, just kind of like a few quarantine type questions here. Like, do you have any new favorite recipes that you've been cooking during quarantine? Well, my new favorite recipe for quarantine is actually just following following the real like um, sour, not sourdough, like whole wheat, white bread mix um, that I have in this book called Flour, Salt, Water, Yeast. And normally when I bake bread, I just like put a bunch of stuff in and kind of guess and then like wait a while and then bake it. And like it turns out great sometimes and then it turns out pretty bad other times. Um, so I would say my new quarantine recipe has been actually using the recipe like that's that's advanced for me it's a hard thing to do sometimes man well i, ju I just like experimenting you know it's yeah. I, it's not hard for me to follow a recipe um which is probably why i don't read recipes more because <laughs> I, I don't like you know there's no mystery there yeah. um but yeah anyway i have been following recipes and it's been yielding some delicious bread Nice, man. So uh, do you have any like new music discoveries that you've really been digging on that you'd like to share with people? Sure. The main thing that I've been into has been uh, Hot 100 charts. Um, I know it's pop music and so everybody knows about it, but like just all the new stuff by Drake and Future and Roddy Rich. Um, I usually like Cardi B, although I haven't been crazy about the chart stuff um lately and there's there's somebody else on there that i'm i'm blanking on their name now i can look this up but but yeah just i i have a newfound appreciation for pop music especially because we talked a little bit about um dead flowers and working on music production working in a studio mm -hmm. and now that i listen to pop music with an ear for what it took to actually make those sounds happen and those songs come together. They are incredible works of art. Um, I, yeah, I've been really enjoying diving into that stuff and uh, yeah, that's what I'm into these days. <laughs> yeah. So would you say like, that's like a on and bashed, like you're enjoying it. It's not like a research type thing or like a guilty pleasure type thing. You're just like, genuinely digging it and being like man this is pretty cool yeah no it's yeah it's, gen it's genuine um i mean my i i will say i'm musically omnivorous and i'm not really judgy about music i used to be when i was younger i was like well no man like i like this <laughs> and this is cool and you don't like it so you're not in my club and i really don't feel that way anymore um i really feel like musical quality is sort of a hybrid of like the eye of the beholder or what the listener gets from it and also just the amount of intentionality and experience that it took to create that music and there's a ton of intentionality and experience that goes into pop music and people get a lot out of it i mean i get like personally a lot out of it um not every song right not every song is for everybody but the yeah. stuff that I like is not, I don't like it in a tongue in cheek or like sarcastic way. Like I just genuinely think Roddy Rich and the box is like a killer song. She got the cash app, like that thing. So into it. Like, yeah. <laughs> so would you, would you say, uh, listening to that, is it kind of like a newer thing? Like since the pandemic started, like really diving into that music or kind of all along you've always kind of been keeping up with that? No, that is a new thing. Um, I, I go through phases where I really focus in and listen on 
on one thing a lot. I mean, I always listen to anything that comes my way, but I'll really get obsessed with, with something. So for like three years, I basically just listened to this one Willie Nelson album, Honeysuckle Rose. Yeah, I listened to other music, but like I would listen to that a couple of times a day. Just like, what is happening in there? It's incredible. Um, and then, you know, and I've been that way with, with Tom Waits and Towns Van Zandt records. Before that, it was like Run DMC and Easy e um, Jurassic Five. I mean, I would go through these phases where, and, and yeah, just Jimi Hendrix for like three years, which then like led into Elmore James, Skip James, B.B. King, uh, Robert Johnson, like deep, you know, acoustic and Chicago blues, Helen Wolf. Uh, this is a long way of saying right now, uh, I, if I have a, my top choice of what I'm going to listen to, it's like going through the hot 100 charts and just listen to pop music. And then right after that, I'll turn around and just listen to some Buck Owens to like mellow out or some Dolly. <laughs> nice, man. That's, that's a good gamut. You got going there. And uh, I'm lucky too, man. I'm real omnivorous with what I choose to listen to. And I, and I feel like that just makes you a better musician, you know, like if you're only listening to the type of music that you play, you end up just kind of being real derivative. So I think it's really important to be having a lot wider palette that you're enjoying. And Yeah. And a piece of it, like advice and sort of thought that I often share with musicians and Bob Dylan talks about this a lot. Uh, it's basically like whatever artist you love, if you want to sound like them or learn from them, you can't just copy them. You have to go find out who they learned from and trace the history of that music to really understand where they're coming from. And um, doing that, you know, in whatever thread I've been into has been immensely educational and it's just really fun. Nice, man. So uh, how about you share a few more songs with us? Sure. Is there anything in particular you want to hear? Oh, man, you know, I've been listening to your music these last couple of days and really been digging the jukebox record. So uh, how about like Making Eggs or My Love for You, Texas? All right, well, let's start with Making Eggs. Yeah. This is, yeah, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> it's my tribute to morning people. I bet you know that person who woke up in second grade. I know what I'm doing with my life and all the day. They often study Latin, foreign policy and calm. Color-coded planners, man, they work for what they want. Oh, dang, I'm on skips. Um, I spaced out because I was distracted by your beautiful face, Antonio. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> oh, dang, I know some, something, something, something. Just as soon as they are her boy. All day, I'm on the skids. You woke up and changed the world while I'm just making eggs. Some folks work for paychecks, some just work for love. I'm stuck in the middle, count singles. Stack in ones, their brains are always turning like the hands of grandpa's clock, inching towards a grand design and know just what they want. Oh, dang. Ba -dum -ba -dum -bum. 
here's the deal. I don't know why this is the one time I'm forgetting the chorus to this song that I've written and sung a hundred times, but I'm going to find it out. Yeah. And I'm going to sing it for you. Yeah. It's Thank you for your incredible patience. All right. We got it. Apologies. Chorus again. Oh, dang. So self-assured. They plan their life and death just as soon as they are heard born. Oh, dang, I'm on the skids. You woke up and changed the world while well, I'm just making eggs. That's way better with the lyrics than with that, I think. <laughs> From Tiburon to Texas, I've seen some things, I guess. Some folks have a fire, and some folks are just a mess. Don't let it bring you down. Don't let it break your yoke. Better living as an ember than to just go up in smoke. Oh, dang. So self assured. They plan their life and death. Just as soon as they are her born. Oh, dang. I'm on the skids. You woke up and changed the world. While I'm just making eggs. You woke up and changed the world. While I'm just making eggs. Yoda lay. Hey, hey, I'm Yeah. Thank you. Thank that, you. Thank you. That was so smooth, man. You're just like so smooth and <laughs> such a joy to listen to. Thank you. And That's I feel cool. like this is like the closest I've come to live music <laughs> like, in a long time, man. So really enjoying this. this is really a treat you got another song for us yeah absolutely i'll do that my love for you texas here yeah um yeah let's see have some water i appreciate you having me on it's a joy to play and sing for folks and um even though I can't see them, I feel like I can. Looking yeah. back, I appreciate everyone being here. And if you're just tuning in and you missed the beginning, you can watch the rerun later, share it with friends. Okay, this is my love for you, Texas. I've never lived in Texas, but um, I've thought about it a lot, which is why I have a song. <laughs> Send for my mother, tell her it's true. I'm moving to Texas, please don't be blue. Down to El Paso. Then south to Big Bend, back up to Marfa, I'll rest in Midland. I grew up rambling, looking for a home. I think I found it, sing it, big Kyle. Oh, what a vision, oh, what a state. My love for you, Texas, grows bigger each day. I'll hang it down, down. Some folks 
folks were lucky, born where they belong. Others must find it if it takes all life long. I've had enough of cold weather and pines. Well, take me to Texas and show me the sky. Oh, what a vision. Oh, what a state. My love for you, Texas, grows bigger each day. I head on to do do dash with you, day day. And I'm having on a wheel, day do do dash, day day. Willie and Lyle, Bob Wills and the boys. Music from Texas always brings me joy. Let's not forget all the others we love. Beyonce, Joe Ely, Selena, and ZZ. Their son, Bolton Hopkins, Mendoza, Scott Joplin, George Jones, and George Street, and Flacco Jimenez, and Ari Kane, DeSarv, and TVZ, Led Belly, T Bone Walker, and Gene Autry, and the Whale and Janice, Buddy Bopper, Manson, Texan, Gary Clark Jr., there's Nora Jones, Stoney LaRue, Meatloaf, St. Vincent, Reverend Horton, Heat, Roy Orbison, and Erica Badu. Oh, what a vision. Oh, what a state. My love for you, Texas, grows bigger each day. Oh, what a vision. My love for you, Texas, grows bigger each day. My love for you, Texas, grows bigger each day. Do, 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 do. My love, teacher. Come on. Yeah. 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 So, uh, before we sign out, is there anything yeah. you want to leave people with? Uh, maybe where to find your music and last things you want to say? Sure. Um, you can find my music at jacksonemmer.com. I think my name is right down here. You can, <laughs> uh, jacksonemmer.com. And, um, my music is on there. It's also on Spotify, iTunes, Apple music, any place you look for it. Um, if you want to keep in touch via social media, that would be great because it's really a numbers game. And so, you know, you liking my stuff on social media really helps and it takes nothing but a couple seconds. And, um, other than that, just know how much I appreciate you listening. I appreciate everyone tuning in, listening to some songs and caring at all what I have to say about music. Nice thing. So uh, once again, my name is Antonio Lopez, Soundbridge Music here, Jackson Emmer, signing out. Hope everyone's doing all right out there. Hope to catch you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.